everyone and welcome to today's laser build video for Destiny 2. This week build is another Warlock centric build, making full use of the exotic Arbalest Linear Fusion Rifle and Empowering Rift to allow you to one shot players no matter where you hit on the body. This idea originally came from watching one of Kami Cake's video of him using the same loadout, but his one was just more gameplay with a bit of commentary. So I've decided to expand on this area for the build by giving you the pros and cons of the set. So let's first start off like always with a subclass, which will be the Eternal of Chaos tree line. This is a personal choice of mine to go with, as it's an all round perfect subclass for aggressive plays and pushing people out in the open, which can benefit me and my teammates out on open maps. I'm also using the subclass so I can make full use of my Chaos Accelerant skill, which allows me to overcharge my grenade and make it even more deadlier when thrown. Combine this with your grenade of choice, which for me is my Vortex grenade, and you have the ability to drain players health relatively quickly and make it much more easier for you to one shot without the empowering rift. To be honest, your subclass of this build can be anything of your choice as we only need empowering rift as part of the build. So if you prefer the solar or the arc train line, then by all means please switch to it. The same goes for your grenades and jump ability as well. Although with your jump, I advise you to go against the use of blink because of how shaky things will be and how you won't always be able to land your shots with the Arbalest perfectly in midair. Our stats now come to a 3 5 5, which is a good all round stat, although allowing some more points into mobility could help for some more engagements, but it's not always that needed. For our headgear, we have the submachine gun targeting perk, which increases stickiness and accuracy and ADS and speed on submachine guns. As my secondary is the Callus Mini Tool with an RPM of 900 and perks that focuses on improving my reload speed, the extra bit of stinkiness when aiming will allow me to basically melt those within my effective range of 5 to 6 plus meters, which in the Crucible is where the majority of shotgun, fusion rifle or sidearm users will be engaging in. For our gloves, we have the Impact Induction, where causing damage to a melee attack will reduce our grenade's cooldown and fastball, which allows us to throw our grenades further. Impact induction will be useful with this set as you will be up close in some situations once you run out of ammo for your linear fusion. Although the set focuses on long to mid range engagements, the majority of your engagements will be up close so you're going to be making full use of the scavenging perk to get more ammo. So our SMG paired with this perk can do wonders with getting our grenades back faster. Our exotic chest, the sanguine alchemy chest, with the incendiary perk called heightened senses which does the following. Standing in the rift grants you and your allies heightened senses, allowing you to retain your radar while ADSing and also marks plus tracks powerful targets without line of sight. This perk is what makes this build effective in PvP, as it allows you to pre-charge your linear fusion pretty much all the time and get more kills easily without having to worry about where your target might be. Now combining this with an empowering rift and you basically have control over whatever part of the map you're on and targeting as no one can sneak up on you to get the upper hand or even push up on you or generally anything. It's like you have a mini UAV always available and always spotting target but please remember your rifts only last for 15 seconds so once they're down that's it no more encounters and no more chances of knowing where the enemy might pop out. Our boots now have Perpetration, which reduces our class ability cooldown when using our class abilities, and Submachine Gun Scavenger, which also provides you with a bonus reserve when picking up ammo. Perpetration is a must for the vast majority of the builds, or loadouts you go with, as it offers you the best of both worlds, being recharging your melee, grenades and rift abilities by simply using your own abilities. Submachine Gun Scavenger is a nice perk as well, but more ammo for it isn't needed for the Crucible as we get plenty enough. However, if it was for a linear fusion rifle on the other hand, then it would be a must as it can increase how much ammo we can get by picking up special ammo brick on the ground, which means we can take up more than two people if we get lucky. Lastly, we have our bond, which has the innovation perk, which reduces our grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of light, and ordnance mod, which increases our grenade regeneration speed. Innovation is handy if you have teammates that will be reducing a lot of orbs, or if you have a massive weapon. As we will be using our grenades to weaken those that we can hit, it's always wise to at least have a perk around reducing your cooldown speed for your grenades, as while you wait for your rift to recharge, you can still want to body shot anyone as long as their health is below a certain threshold, which I would say would be around 170 to 150 health, as Guardians in the Crucible have a max health of 225 I believe. 
Now the weapons in our primary slot that we are using is the Arbalest Near Fusion Rifle, which is the very first Near Fusion for the primary slot ever. Its perks make it deadly in PvE against shielded enemies, as its incendiary perk, Compounding Force, allows you to fire a slug that causes a massive amount of damage to shielded enemies. It also has another perk called Disruption Break, where destroying enemy's shield with this weapon makes your target more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. Basically, this weapon is designed to be a shield breaker in PvE. Now in PvP, these perks have no effect on your target at all, but it's still deadly to go up against because of how effective its range is, its ability to one-shot targets via headshots, its general stickiness in fact, being very sticky, and the ability to one-shot targets via a body shot, no matter what the resistance is, only if it's empowered. Now I could have used this with my heavy linear fusion rifle, but getting heavy in crucible is like trying to pull teeth with a pair of pliers. It's possible, but you're going to be struggling for a good while. So in this case, we'll be using the Arbalest to achieve our goals, and let me tell you that this weapon is very slept on in the Crucible, no joke. Landing headshots with the weapon is so easy because of the stickiness of the weapon. In the clips I'm showing you, you can see me get kills from both being empowered and being non-empowered, and the moments I'm not empowered, I'm getting kills via headshots. You can even in fact take on scout to sniper users at their ranges of around 10 plus meters, say 10 to 15 plus meters, and still come out on top because this weapon is just so effective with landing its smooth shots. Really is a perfect little weapon for those that don't want to do much but still do anything to win and just want a cheap way out of one shotting players. Our secondary now is the Callus Mini Tool with ricochet rounds that increases stability and slightly increases range. Threat Detector, which increases the reload, stability and handling when 2 plus enemies are in close proximity. And Feeding Frenzy, which increases my reload speed upon kills made. My masterwork is in the stability, and my mod choice is Freehand Grip for increasing accuracy and ready speed while hip firing. Another weapon that I stepped on and one that I hope to review in the future, this weapon could make short work of players within its effective range and is honestly like a mini recluse without the increased damage perk. It's a 900 RPM weapon, so its impact damage will be low, but with 37 rounds within its magazine, this will make up the low damage and can allow you to take out 2 plus players before needing to reload. And this reload with the following perks won't be long as the two perks synchronize well with enemies within your vicinity. So once you've taken 1 to 2 players out, you can then move on to the rest of the team within half a second of your reload speed. Its stats across the board is quite nice and generally is one of my most favourite SMGs to date from the Menagerie DLC. I would suggest you get it while you can, as it's one of those weapons that I can see in the near future being majorly used by a lot of players. Lastly, our heavy is the sleepless rocket launcher, with kill clip and cluster bomb. Perks are more aimed towards PvE rather than PvP, but it's still effective nonetheless. As a heads up, out of the weapons I chose, they are down to preference for my playstyle and what I combine them with for the exotic. The only thing not changing is the weapon that makes the build whole. So the Arbalest, but everything else can be changed to your liking. Now as you can see from the clips, netting multiple kills back to back with my empowered Arbalest is as simple as a point and click adventure game. One hit to the body is all I need to kill them, and if anyone rushes me with a shotgun, they can use my secondary to quickly make short work of them. Now I don't know about you, but I found a lot of success with this weapon with or without the empowering rift at times, as it seems like the sticky dust of the weapon is quite strong from mid to long ranges. I've also noticed with the strong magnetism on the weapon, landing headshots seem quite smooth and easy to achieve in your effective range. It also has low zoom, so it makes clearer for you to land your shots in crowded areas and see more ahead on your field of view. It's honestly quite strange to see a weapon like this in your primary do well, and generally land kills against those in their supers. Yes, that's right, you heard right. You can with an empower with one shot kill the body, a super user, depending on their health, depending on how much resilience they have, and if you generally land a headshot in total. And it's quite embarrassing to do at times because honestly, I've had many encounters where I fired this at a super user, one shot at them, and I'm just there like, oh, they, that shouldn't have happened, they should have killed me. Because I'm so used to them killing me before I killed them. But with this little setup, if you're sick and tired of all the super users, especially the roaming ones, then this is a slightly good counter against them. 
Not a perfect one, but a good one to make use of. Now, one thing to note, you can one-shot body shot kill a super users depending on how much health they have. But, if you want to go ahead and kill a super user at full health towards the body, you would need to have one, a empowered weapon, so empowered arbalist, and two, you need to aim at their body and hit them two times to kill them. So if you want to kill a super user towards the body and you're not going to aim in for the head, aim for the body, but it needs to be empowered and it needs to be two times. You land two shots on an empowered round to a super user and it will outright kill them no matter what the resilience is. Just a heads up. The only downside of the Arbalest and the build as a whole is its starting ammo of 2, which you will need to make full use of before scavenging for more, and this pre charge up time which is a common problem for all fusion rifles. You also have the issue of your empowering rift lasting only for 15 seconds which combined with your fusion ammo that you start means you need to make sure you land your shots 95% of the time. You've then also got the flinch to deal with against others who fire back at you which can make the weapon uncontrollable for some even making it frustrating to some levels if you're not used to taking on other players flinch. On its own it's quite a powerhouse if you can land your headshots but once empowered you then have a miniature railgun which we've all been wanting to get from day one so why not try this build out for the chance to actually have a mini railgun now? I suggest you try it. So that comes to the end of the build video for this week. If you enjoy the content and would like to see more like this in the future then please leave a like, a sub or even share with others who may be interested in these type of builds. But once again thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.